What is the most terrifying thing you've ever experienced while home alone? Story one. A couple years back, I woke up at 3 a.m. to see someone walk past my bedroom door. I called out in my just woken up, not thinking haze, thinking maybe my boyfriend had come over while I was sleeping, but got no response, so knew it wasn't him. Got out of bed, stupidly forgetting to take my phone or any kind of defensive item with me, and went into the front room where the light was on to be met with a random guy staring at one of the walls. I asked him who he was and got no answer. At this point, I'd actually woken up enough to realize I could really be in trouble, so ran back to the bedroom, grabbed my phone, and ran outside on the phone to the police who showed up within a few minutes. Turns out the guy was intellectually ill, and to this day, neither myself or the police know how he got in. Story 2 I moved into our house a month before my husband did, and I was painting our guest room with the windows wide open. I was busy painting, listening to music when I realized it had gotten dark outside. I heard the leaves crunching outside, but didn't think anything of it because we have a lot of neighbors who walk their dogs. When I went to close the windows, I saw a man standing in my backyard under the tree, maybe five feet from our back door, staring up at me. I fell to the floor and realized the back glass door was probably open, and nothing but the screen, which he could have easily just walked into my house. Crawled to my phone and called my husband, who then called 911 while rushing home to me. We have a six-feet-tall fence around our yard. This person hopped it to watch me. I couldn't sleep right at night for months. Story 3. One day while I was working afternoons a couple years back, I woke up at around 10 a.m. and started to watch American Dad before getting up. Next thing you know, I hear my back door open. A normal thing in our home since we only use the back door. But no one was supposed to be home yet. I assumed it was my mom and didn't think anything of it. Then I heard footsteps coming up the stairs as my bedroom was on the second floor. I call out to my mom and get no response. Then my door cracks open and a head pops in. It's a 30-ish-year-old man with a blonde beard and a big mane of greasy hair who looks shocked to see me. At the time, I was about 260 pounds, 6, 3, and 20 years old. M. I was also sitting in only my boxers. Before I was able to realize what was happening, he asked, Is this the residence? To which I reply, No. He makes a swift exit, and before I can recollect my thoughts, he's not even in my driveway. Talk to a family friend who is a veteran police officer. Turns out a man has been pulling this kind of stunt to rob people in nearby towns. Story 4. I was babysitting a kid who had a video monitor and was told that she wouldn't wake up while the parents were out, and if she did, to call them right away. I was watching TV with the monitor set off to the side to keep an eye on her, and right around 11, the camera's view shifted a few inches. It then began to slightly jiggle like someone was messing with it. I was squinting at it, trying to decide what I was actually seeing. And I kid you not, the whole screen burst to static for a few seconds, and the kid started wailing. She stood up and was screaming in her crib, just like one of the kids from The Sims. When she didn't fall back asleep after a few minutes, I called Mom, and she said, Okay, we're on our way home anyway. We think she has nightmares, sometimes it's fine. Never again. Story 5 I was about 21 or 22 and living by myself at the time, and I left my window open on a pleasant night. It was low enough to the ground that you could get in if you really tried, but the screen wasn't easy to take off. And I lived in a fairly safe neighborhood, so I didn't even think twice about it. Woke up in the middle of the night because I smelled breathe, and I reached out to turn on my lamp and my hand hit what was very obviously a person. My brain fully woke up at that point, and I realized there was a shirtless man in my bedroom smoking a cane and staring at me. I remember yelling for him to get out, and I must have spooked him just as badly as he spooked me because he leapt out my window and took off. I slammed it shut and moved a bookcase in front of it. And when I went out the next morning in the daylight, found the screen sitting against the house. Didn't sleep the rest of the night, and I haven't slept with a window more than cracked ever since. I also absolutely refused to live on the ground floor of a building. I don't know if he was planning to rob me or assault me or both, but it was absolutely terrifying and makes me wonder how many times it happened and I didn't wake up. Story 6. I was home from university for the summer and didn't have a job, so was home alone whilst everyone was at work. I live in a small village on a quiet street, so it was completely normal to have all the windows and doors open during the day. Late on in the afternoon, I get a call from my dad. I'm around the corner, but struggling to get into the street. I'll explain when I'm home, but lock all the doors, close the windows, and go upstairs. This was obviously strange. We don't live in a bad area, and my dad's sense of humor isn't that mean, but the tone in his voice made me do it without hesitation. Everything closed and locked and upstairs I go. A few minutes later, I get a second call from my dad. Some police are going to be going through the side gate into the back garden to check the shed. I'll be home soon. Again, I was terrified, but knew to just ask later. 
stayed upstairs but did see armed police checking the back garden. When my dad finally got home, I obviously asked what had happened. Turns out some 16-year-old kid on our street had taken some legal highs, stabbed a neighbor, then did a runner. Absolutely terrifying, but a sad part is they found him at nighttime because he is scared of the dark and came out of hiding. Story 7. When I was 19 in my first apartment, I had someone knock at the door. I looked through the peephole and saw this burly, heavy-set man who abruptly started screaming to let him in. He was screaming things like he was going to beat my peach and kick the door down if I didn't open. I called the cops, and as soon as someone got on the phone, he started body slamming my door to break in. I was freaking out and crying as they quickly had five cops show up within five-plus minutes. As soon as he heard the sirens, he quickly walked away, and they met him at the bottom of the stairs. Apparently, he was after the previous renter, but was extremely intoxicated. They arrested him, and thankfully, he never came back. I ended up breaking my lease and moving out three months later. It was in a very nice neighborhood, but it quickly made me wish I was back home with family instead of being on the other side of the United States. Story 8. This happened to me a couple of years ago. I have also lived on my own a long time, so do not get sacred easily. I had just finished reading in bed, and I turned my lamp off and settled down to go to sleep and hugged my cat up close to me. This would be about 1.30 in the morning. I closed my eyes and I had a voice say meow, like imitating a cat. My window was open, so I thought it was just someone being weird outside. I opened my eyes and in the middle of my bedroom was a small boy wearing a red jumper waving his arm above his head. I leapt up like a god oh no ninja and put the light on, and my heart was going mad. Now, nothing paranormal has happened in this house, ever in the entire time I have lived here. I spent the whole night totally freaked out, only getting a bit of sleep when it started to get light outside. My friends thought this was hilarious when I told them. I was saying there is no way I am living in a haunted house and started Googling cleansing, excorcists, and whatnot. The next few nights, other weird stuff started happening. I started sleeping with the TV on, and as soon as I tried to get any sleep, I would hear freaky voices coming from it, or I would notice shadows dip by the side of my bed. It was dreadful. I actually resorted to saying out loud, I'm really tired, so if you could not haunt me for one night, I would be really grateful. I had never really believed in any of this sort of stuff before, so it was like an entire paradigm shift for me. Anyway, I was going on about this to my friends at work, and one of them asked if I was on sweets. Well, funnily enough, I had just started taking this new tablet, Montelukast, for my asthma. When I got home, read the side effects, a rare one being hallucinations. Stopped taking them. No more hauntings. Story 9. I have been pretty fortunate based on these comments, but I was home alone one night while my wife and son were visiting my MIL. I walked back to our bedroom to see someone rummaging through my son's room on the video baby monitor. Immediately grabbed my firearm and yelled to the other side of the house, I am armed. Come out slowly, over and over while slowly making my way back to his room. Got there, flipped on the light, and nothing. Searched the whole house pumped full of adrenaline. Finally satisfied I was alone, I went back to my room and the guy was back in the room. I took a closer look and I am ashamed to say I was looking at myself. The camera is a live feed on our Wi-Fi and it was steaming on a huge delay. I have never known it to do that and it has not done it since. Story 10. My BF worked away from home a lot and I always struggled to sleep on the first night he was away. On this occasion I was woken by the sound of a man shouting and then someone banging on wood or a front door. I jumped up and looked out my bedroom window. Just in time to see a man dressed all in black walking through our garden towards the house. I ran to the front of the house to look out of the front window and make sure he kept going. He did, but he met up with another man dressed in black walking towards my house. I was terrified and called the police. They arrived in a matter of minutes and checked out the back garden, but they were gone. Turned out a neighbor had caught them both trying to steal his car, and one had escaped through the gardens while the other had run through the roads, and they had met up outside my house. I didn't sleep at all that night, and my brother came to stay the next night. I'm so glad I live in an apartment now, much more security. Story 11. When I was like 14, I was home alone one night around 10 p.m., stood in my kitchen making some cereal. It's dark outside, and then all of a sudden, the loudest sound. Some drunk woman literally launched a hammer through my kitchen window. It was so loud and glass was everywhere. I followed her down the street whilst calling the police. Pretty strange, added for everyone asking why I followed. So the reason I actually followed her was because you could see really clearly through the smashed window as it was now wide open. She looked like a very fragile little old crackhead lady that could barely walk or see straight, 
and she started stumbling away, mumbling some cow once she had done it. Plus, I didn't really know how the fudge I was going to explain this cow to my parents if I didn't have a solid answer, haha. Huh? But yes, it was a very distressed walk whilst following her. Definitely an action caused by adrenaline, too. Story 12. Somebody tried to break into the house while I was by myself. The whole place was quiet and dark at nighttime. I walked past the front door to go upstairs for bed, and the handle suddenly started jerking around like the Hulk was trying to get in. Then whoever it was started to either kick or shoulder the door, and it was making the whole frame jiggle. I completely froze and my mind went blank. Just standing there like an idiot and staring. My dog bolted down the stairs like it was her time to shine, scrambled on the tile, and let loose the most vicious barks I've ever heard. Whoever it was left, she was a very good girl. I miss her. Story 13. I was living alone after my ex-husband moved out and the creepy guy across the street who was 20 years older and enjoyed sweets kept trying to date me. He would harass me when I left my house or arrived home and would threaten to assault me. I had just started dating my current BF and he helped hang up motion detecting lights outside. I started carrying pepper spray and leaving the alarm on whenever I was home. My BF and I also agreed that if I didn't text him for a certain period of time and he couldn't get a hold of me that he'd go to my house and check on things. I also CC'd him on my work calendar just in case. It got so scary that my BF actually moved in a lot sooner than we planned because I felt so unsafe. After creepy guy watched my BF move in and saw him puttering around with project cars in the driveway, he stopped harassing me and moved away a few months later. I've never felt so unsafe in my own home, wondering if the outside lights were on because of the neighbor's cat or because creepy guy was trying to break in. Story 14 one afternoon, someone knocked at my back door. I thought it was the guy coming to read our meter, so I opened the door. Next thing I know, two huge guys pushed into the house and one of them threw me up against the wall. Then they shoved me down on the couch. They told me they were hell's angels and they were pissed because my BF was selling too much sweets, cutting into their profits. They kept calling me by my next door neighbor's name. We had suspected they were selling sweets. All of the people stopping by for less than five minutes made it pretty obvious. I just kept telling them I wasn't her. One of them searched the house while the other kept me pinned to the couch. They started to realize they were in the wrong house because they couldn't find anything where they were told it was. My neighbor's house is a single floor with a basement. My house is a four level back split. Then I showed them my mail because it showed my name and they knew they messed up up. They started telling me that they were after my neighbor's BF because he assaulted their cousin, which I knew was BS, but I didn't care. I just wanted them to leave. They robbed me of my cash and left. I now have locks on my screen doors. Story 15. Not exactly alone, but I was home with my newborn son and someone knocked on the front door. I was expecting my mother, but she usually comes in through the garage. I thought it was strange, but yelled, come in, because why wouldn't I? Then this cracked out old woman comes stumbling through the door and asks me for a ride to the nearest gas station. I told her I didn't have a car seat for my son, so I couldn't go anywhere. So she starts screaming, that's just inappropriate, and doesn't stop even when I'm telling her she needs to leave or I'll call the cops. After a minute or so, my mother actually pulls in the driveway, the crackhead sees the car and bolts back out the door, and I never see her again. That night my truck got broken into. Can't for sure say it was the same woman, but I have her description to the cops anyway. Story 16. I was asleep at home alone. When I turned over in bed, I casually opened my eyes a little whilst turning, and they were shut again just as quickly. In that split second, I could have sworn I had seen a man stood at the bottom of my bed. I laid still, awake with my eyes closed, trying not to act like I was awake, and trying to listen for any sound in the room of someone breathing or moving. Couldn't hear anything. I was too scared to open my eyes and look consoled myself that there wasn't any way someone could have gotten in without me hearing a window smash and fell back asleep. When I got up in the morning, though, the front door was open. They didn't take anything and left no signs of being there. Was still very, very creepy, though. Edit, typo. The guy wasn't a stud, he was stood. Edit, thanks for my first award. Story 17. Was home with my infant twin daughters who were sound asleep. I was watching TV in the lower level of my tri-level home. On that level, the windows look out to the backyard, and as I got up to go to the kitchen, something caught my attention. What looks like a pale left arm is being subtly illuminated outside in the far right window, maybe six inches away from the window. It had angled straight down as if to steadying itself. My heart sunk. Then I could feel my heartbeat in my neck. I ran up the few stairs to the main floor and grabbed my phone and returned to see if it was still there. Nope, nothing. I've never been remotely shaken like I was then. 
called the non-emergency police and, when they arrived, walked to the backyard with the officers but didn't find anything. They were great and kept saying calling them was the right thing to do. It's what we're here for, etc. Don't know what it was, but the image is seared into my memory. Story 18. A few years back, I was home alone during a power storm. I went into the bathroom to take a dump, and at the exact time I was shitting, I sneezed. Well, the power went out as well. The house was pitch black, and I literally thought I'd cow myself blind. I couldn't see my hands, so in a panic, I was yelling, No! This cannot be true. I was in a panic feeling for the toilet paper to wipe and flush. After completing the task, I just sat on the toilet trying to figure out how to tell everyone I know that I literally cow myself blind by sneezing while shitting. After about two minutes of complete darkness and dread and panic, lightning struck outside and lit up my hallway. Best oh no feeling ever, eat it. Thank you to everyone for the awards and comments. I told this story to a few friends one night about three years ago, and they laughed quite hard and still joke with me about it. When the question came up on here, scary in the sense most people responded never popped in my mind, but shitting myself blind did. Once again, thank you all. Story 19. A few years ago, I was home alone in my basement playing video games when I hear the door that connects my kitchen to the garage creak open and slam shut but I never heard the actual mechanical garage door open. Then I heard heavy footsteps of someone wearing boots walk the length of my kitchen directly above me. I originally thought, oh, my brother must have forgotten something, as he had left about five minutes before that for work, so I was about to yell up to him to make fun of him, but something in the back of my mind was telling me, hold on, something's not right here. So I muted my TV to both hear better and to stay quiet. Then I heard the footsteps turn around and walk back to the door, and again I hear it creak open and slam shut. But again I never heard the actual mechanical garage door open or close. So I slowly walk upstairs thinking maybe my brother just forgot to close the garage door. I slowly open the door to my garage and see that the garage door has been closed the entire time. The only two explanations I can come up with are either something paranormal happened, or someone broke into my house, walked through my kitchen and left without taking anything, while also not letting me hear them open my garage door. In my opinion, both are equally terrifying to me. Story 20. My roommates were out of town, and my dog started growling in the middle of the night at something at the end of a dark hallway. She never behaved like that, so I was genuinely freaked out. Then I started hearing noises coming from my kitchen on the other side of the house. I was fully convinced someone was in there, so like any idiot in a movie, I got a flashlight and a weapon and went to investigate. As soon as the flashlight hit the kitchen area, something freaked out and knocked a bunch of cow over. I was terrified, and then my flashlight hit the culprit. A huge, flipping raccoon had snuck through the doggy door and was eating my dog's food in the kitchen. We made eye contact, and it immediately fled outside. Story 21. I forgot about this one before I posted another, but the day a teenager asked for help. I was loading laundry while my baby napped in my apartment just a door down. The kid was being followed by an extremely tall and muscular man who was responsible for the nakedness and kept trying to get the kid to lower his voice and go inside his apartment. I didn't have a phone with me, and it was scary while I looked for one. Shout out to Bedford, Texas Police Department. They had two police cars blocking the parking lot exits before I hung up with the police. It was less than two minutes total from when I started dialing to the officers separating the victim from the attacker. Their response time was awesome, and that child was so brave. As this guy kept a stream of cow, like, you know how much this is going to hurt your mom if you tell? She's going to be heartbroken if you ruin this for her. That kid shook and shouted back things like, well, isn't that asterisk your asterisk fault? And if you cared at all, you never would have touched me. And my mom loves me. She's only going to ask why I didn't tell her sooner. I didn't know him at all, but I was so proud of that boy. Head bowed and embarrassed to be in public, he was still so strong and refused to be made ashamed of what someone else had done to him. Story 22. The 13th of November, 1981, I was 15 at the time. F. I was at home with the cat. My parents were out with friends and the house shook and the lights and electrics went out. They came home a couple of hours later to find me under dining room table with the cat and all the lights out. Father. Why are you sitting in the dark, me? The house shook and the lights went out. Father. Oh, there was a bomb in Wimbledon, six miles away by the IRA. Me, didn't you think to check I was okay? Father, well, we weren't hurt, so you should have been okay. I was terrified. I'd been involved in bomb scares before, but never experienced one going off. And if the house shook from a bomb six miles away, it was big. I've only experienced something like that one other time, thank goodness, when the Buntsfield oil storage exploded in 2005. 
That was probably a worse explosion because it happened 40 miles from my home, and yet it still shook the walls. It woke my husband with a start who thought for a moment he was back in the army. And my father, asleep in his own home that night, slept through it. Story 23. I was chilling on the couch doing whatever when suddenly a really heavy person starts sprinting in our attic. Sounded like steel-toed boots and everything. I'm a really small woman, so I immediately freaked out, thinking there's a gigantic man stomping around my home. Then the screaming starts. Literal flipping screaming, like something from The Exorcist, and there's multiple voices. I sneaked outside and cried, extremely shaken, and called the cops. Guess what's in my attic? Not a big assaulty, no, raccoons. Also, the raccoons were mating. That's what the screaming came from. I bawled to the cops about horny raccoons. Story 24. I had a really bad sinus infection once. Couldn't clear my system out for a week or more. Decided to try generic Mucinex. I lost three days. I came to, standing in the middle of my studio apartment, staring at the wall. I could barely remember anything. Just felt like I was a passenger in my body, kind of. I had worked all three of those days. Piloted public transport, cooked, translated stuff, used knives. All in this weird fugue state. When I came to, I spent a good hour at three in the morning trying to figure out what happened what caused it. The only thing I had done differently was trying to clear up sinus infection with the meds. Poured those right in the toilet, and it never happened again. It was terrifying for me, the pure and utter confusion. Story 25. I had a choking scare when I was like 11 and I was home alone and watching TV while eating Skittles. I liked to put a bunch in my mouth and make like a Skittle ball that I would chew on. Something on the show I was watching made me laugh and I swallowed the ball and it got lodged in my throat. I then experienced a few seconds of sheer terror because I realized that there was nobody here to help me at all and I was probably going to pass away. Then I remembered some cartoon or something where someone jammed their stomach on a chair and got something unstuck from their throat. So I lunged at the corner of the recliner as hard as I could with my stomach and it actually worked and popped the small ball out. It was super lucky because I really had no idea what I was doing, but one of the worst feelings I have ever experienced. Definitely never ate Skittles that way again after that. Story 26. I was chilling in my room, and I suddenly heard this loud peach thump from the back door. It was seriously so loud that I fell off my bed. I didn't want to go investigate that cow because I like living. But if someone was breaking in, I should probably go check it out. I messaged my friend the details and asked her to FaceTime me. We get on chat and she mutes herself so she doesn't make any noise. I turn the camera around so she sees what I do in case it does turn out to be a person and I pass away. I walk through my house and get to the back door. The door was locked, but the laundry room next to it was slightly ajar. I slowly creep to the door and take a quick glance in. Nobody was there. So I make my way to the back door and open it. Nothing. I go back to the laundry room and take a closer inspection in case something is hiding there. That's when I noticed the broom that was supposed to be hanging from the wall was no splayed across the floor. Turns out the broom just fell. Still almost made me cow myself. Story 27. One night I was watching The Conjuring at home with my little sister when we heard someone putting a key into our front door and opening it. We were sitting in the living room next to a sliding door that was very close to the front door, so we both heard it very clearly. Now, this didn't alarm us, since we knew our dad had recently gone out to get some stuff, so we just assumed he had returned. Dad, you're back already? I casually asked. There was no response. Dad? I asked again thinking that he had not heard me the first time. Again, silence. At this point, I get the feeling that something isn't quite right, and I could tell by the look on my sister's face that she was quite nervous as well. I'll note that up to this point, she had spent the evening rolling her eyes at horror movie cliches, and she very rarely gets scared. We looked at each other for a moment, wondering what we should do before we started hearing a few more scattering sounds from right outside the sliding door. I was frozen in fear by this stage. I tried one more time in a louder but shakier voice. Dad, is that you? Please respond, please respond. Asterisk repeated in my head. But the silence continued. Now at this point I'm freaking out and I literally jumped off the couch. My sister also abruptly gets up and starts rapidly walking towards the other end of the room which leads to the kitchen area. She later revealed to me that she was planning on grabbing a knife. She had this horrified look on her face that I hadn't seen before. We looked at each other in nervous silence. I didn't really know what to do, and I didn't want to make any further sounds. I finally decided to walk up to the sliding door and began opening it as slowly as possible, peering into the darkness. I know, 
I literally became the idiot who investigates the unknown, creepy noise without anything to protect myself with. When the door was finally open wide enough, I poked my head out and scanned the corridor, preparing for the worst. To my surprise, there was no one there. But what was more strange was that the front door was still completely shut. We never heard the door close. My sister and I were obviously both extremely relieved as we were almost certain that there was an intruder in the house. After this, I immediately went to go ask my mom, who was situated in her bedroom at the other end of our house, if it was her or whether she had noticed anything. She told me that she thought my dad had come home as well as she also heard someone opening the front door. Around half an hour later, which felt like an eternity at the time as we still quite shaken from the incident, my dad finally arrived home and confirmed that he had not come home earlier. To this day, my sister and I still have no idea what happened that night. Story 28. Nothing quite that terrifying yet. PLS age well. But once I left all the bathroom windows open wide by mistake when it was very windy, and I woke up in the middle of the night to the bathroom door slamming open and shut, and felt like I was going to pour out the water myself with fright. I stayed in bed like I was paralyzed, and I could feel this cool breeze coming into my room, all the cold air being let in LOL. I prayed to whoever above to remove who or whatever it was from my home and ask for my life to be spared. I got under the covers and called my aunt and asked her to come over as she had a spare key, and she did. Her and her husband came with weapons and charged upstairs into the bathroom, no fear. They realized it was the wind pushing the door around. I still stayed with her that night, lol. Vertical bar. Story 29. Growing up, I lived out in the country with only a few houses near us, and both my parents worked full-time jobs in town. Because of this, I spent a lot of my summer days at home by myself. When I was 14 years old, I had just got out of the shower and was getting ready in the bathroom mirror when I heard someone in the living room. The majority of our house was hardwood, and there was a very distinct sound when someone walked through the living room. I didn't think much of it, because even though I was home alone, my parents often drove home during lunch to eat. After the person walked around the living room for a couple minutes, I finally called out, Mom? Dad? But no response. Instead, the walking just stopped. I had my cell phone in the bathroom, so I called my mom and asked if she was home. She told me no and that my dad was not either. I told her someone was in the house and she told me to get out. Luckily, the bathroom I was using was only a few feet away from the front door, so I opened the bathroom door and ran out the front door into the yard. Later, my mom came and picked me up and my dad walked through the house, but no one was there. This wouldn't have been too crazy if it wasn't for what happened in the following days. My neighbor's wife, who lived across the street, was taking a nap a couple days later. She woke up to a sound in her house. When she opened her eyes, there was a man in her hallway. She called out to him and he ran out the front door. When she went outside, her garage door was opened where he can manually force it open to get inside. My neighbor's wife's underwear drawer was open and the man had taken all of her panties while she was sleeping. So naturally, I assumed that the sound in my house the day before were this man as well. Story 30. I was in high school at the time. 3 a.m., I've just finished a term paper that's due the next day. I fall asleep on the couch for a few minutes, but slowly claw my way back to consciousness. As I trudge through the kitchen in complete darkness, half asleep and looking forward to passing out in my bed, boom, the loudest explosion I've ever heard. In retrospect, comparable to a 12-gauge shotgun. I hear stuff shooting in every direction, including small bits of something whizzing past my head. I oh no near had a heart attack. Turns out my younger brother had made root beer as a class project, elementary school. He left it on a windowsill and it fermented until it built up enough pressure to rupture the glass bottle. The stuff flying around was glass shards. They shattered a ceramic plant candy and embedded themselves in various surfaces. Fortunate I was unhurt. But for a moment I was completely confused and absolutely terrified. Story 31. I was home for the weekend from uni, but my parents and siblings were away, so was home alone. Our house is quite secluded, with a church and graveyard next door and closest neighbors up the street, but quite a bit away. I had all the doors locked and was settling down to watch a movie when the doorbell starts to ring, so I go to answer it. No one there. Then the back doorbell rings. No one there again. This keeps happening over and over, and it is pitch black outside. Then whoever it was began banging on windows and yelling at this point I'm freaking out. So I begin to call the police and yell at the people outside that I've called them when it turns out it was a couple of fellas from uni playing a prank on me. I was terrified and reduced to tears at this point, but they thought it was hilarious. They did a few more things like that to me over the two, three years I was at uni with them, and I always thought they were my friends. I'm older and wiser now to know that they were just... Story 32. When I was nine, I was staying home alone. It was early morning. 
I had just gotten out of the shower and brushed my teeth. I put on my favorite outfit, set up a little area in the living room with my drink and a snack, and turned on the TV to watch. The phone rang. I went across the house to answer. The voice on the other end was familiar and very comforting. He asked about my day so far and made small talk. After a minute or so, he said, I like your outfit. Is pink your favorite color? I replied, oh, thank you. No, it isn't. What were you planning on watching on TV? It took me a few seconds to understand what was happening, as I was only nine and very naive. The voice on the other end of the phone changed. It became deep and raspy and horrific. The voice then proceeded to describe my assault and murder in graphic detail. I went numb, my skin felt as if it were on fire, my heart was racing. I had never been more terrified in my entire life. I slammed the phone down and called my mom at work. I tried to explain what had happened, and I'm sure I wasn't making much sense. She got on to me for answering the phone and told me to go back about my day. I remember trying to explain that he was watching me. He told me what I had been doing. He told me what I was wearing. I mentioned that I was going to call 911 because I needed help. That isn't necessary. I'm not coming home. Just don't answer the phone and go watch TV. I hung up. I was confused. I was scared. I could feel eyes on me. I pulled the curtains closed. I raced around the house and was torn between doing what I felt was right and doing what I had been told by my mother. This whole time, the phone was ringing. The second it would stop, it would start again. The sound of the phone ringing would pulse through my tiny body like electricity and practically paralyze me. I was frozen and on fire at the same time. I waited for a pause in ringing and called 911. I'm home by myself, and I'm nine, and someone is watching me, and he is going to terminate me. She tried to keep me calm. She told me she would send help. I remember standing there, listening to this kind voice trying to help me. But I could feel every horror movie scenario playing out behind me. Was he creeping up behind me with a knife? Was he going to shoot me through a window? Was he going to throw a rock through the glass and open the door? I couldn't breathe. I couldn't feel my body, but I was also overly aware of my skin. In a moment of panic, I set off the alarm to the house and ran outside. I remember this sense of relief, but also this overwhelming feeling of having a separation in my reality. The house felt small and dark and dangerous and cold. Outside felt open, safe and warm. I could hear lawnmowers, birds chirping. It was a beautiful break from the bone-chilling feeling of the phone. It was like I was watching a movie and I could see myself experiencing both of these environments at the same time. A neighbor was pushing his child in a swing. He was concerned. He let me stand next to him and he protected me. I could hear the sirens. The blaring sound getting louder as they grew closer. It felt like it took an eternity, but the police arrived. He walked over to me and asked me what happened. I did my best to explain, but so many of the words the voice on the phone used were embarrassing. I couldn't bring myself to say such adult words to a police officer. His other words were bone-chilling. I couldn't say those either. I can still hear my young voice repeating, He was watching me. He said he's going to terminate me. Not long after, my mom's car pulled into the driveway. She, for some reason, decided to come home. She didn't look for me or come speak to me. She calmly got out and walked over the A police officer. I was standing in the doorway from the house to the garage, facing the driveway. I could see my mom, the police officer. I was watching, trying to understand trying to figure out what was happening. And then I saw it, her laughter, she was laughing. My face was swollen from tears, my heart was still racing. My skin was on fire, and my mom was laughing. I slowly crept closer and overheard, I'm so sorry about this. She just got scared being home alone and overreacted. What is happening? What did I do wrong? Did I imagine this? Was this a dream? Should I not have called 911? Did I overreact? My memory of what happened after that is hazy. I remember refusing to stay home alone, the sound of the phone ringing rippling through my body. It wasn't something I liked discussing. I refused to repeat what had been said to me by the voice on the phone. My mom decided she knew who did it. She didn't even know the details. There was no investigation. No one was questioned. She told me it was a boy my age who lived across the street. I knew it was impossible. And no matter how much I protested, I was always told it was him. Many years later, after I was an adult with children, we were at Christmas. Everyone was in the living room, and I had gone into a back bedroom to change a diaper. As I was walking out of the room and back into the living room, I could hear my mom laughing, her voice as if she had been telling a joke. The faces of everyone in the room told a different story. Discomfort, anguish, shock, fear, yet she was still laughing. It felt as if I was walking in slow motion. 
One of my older children stopped me from entering the living room and sort of pushed me back into the room I had just come out of. She just told the story of you being home alone and the man threatening to terminate you. She told it like it was a joke. Like a funny story from your childhood. I never learned who it had really been. I deal with my fear of ringing phones and phone conversations on a daily basis. Story 33. One night I was home alone, grilling and chilling. Drinking beer and smoking dope, about half lit. Wearing my hoe clothes. It was a great time. As soon as I sat down to eat, I heard a woman yelling for help and pounding on doors. Once I realized she was, wasn't a threat to me, I sprinted up the road to find her. She was covered in blood and told me her husband was trapped in the truck he flipped. She kept trying to get me to help her pull him out of the truck, and I said, Lady, I know this is an emergency, but I ain't no EMT. The worst part was I live in the woods with no cell service. But luckily, I was able to get to my landlord's attention so he could call 911 from the landline. I was up until 3 a.m. that night because I could not wind down after the fact. Everyone survived and the guy got out on his own, but it was the scariest night of my life. Story 34. I woke up to someone pounding on my door at 3 a.m. My boyfriend worked overnight at the time, so he was gone. I reached for my phone and it wasn't where I left it. So obviously my first thought was that someone was in my apartment and took my phone the stranger style. I quickly snapped out of it as the person continued constantly pounding on the door and realized that my phone just fell off my bed. I grabbed it and called the police to let them know about the disturbance and that I was afraid to open the door and they sent someone out. I stupidly didn't even get out of bed to go look through the peephole because I was too freaked. I then called my boyfriend and was informed that he accidentally ordered food to our house instead of his work. <coughs> story 35. Hey, an opportunity to drop one of my weird stories. When I was in college at Georgia Tech, I stayed at a building known as the GLC. It was on the far north side of campus away from most of the colleges, so not too many people stayed at it. I liked it because it was quiet and very easy to rebook my same room due to the lack of demand. When I say it was quiet, I mean we barely ever heard our neighbors, if we even had them. Really, only ever hearing other people when they slammed the heavy outer doors. This event happened during Thanksgiving break. I always stayed on campus during Thanksgiving to get work done and chill in peace. My three roommates were gone, however, so the quiet GLC was even more silent. I was cleaning my room at the time, and I had gotten out a bottle of Febreze. Now this is important because one of my roommates hated Febreze and would complain even if I sprayed it in my room because the AC would spread it around the apt. So I took the opportunity to spray some and get the college boy musk gone. As soon as I sprayed it, I heard one of my roommate's doors fly open and slam closed and angry, heavy footsteps stop into and around the living room. I thought I had messed up up and real pissed off my roommate, but I did find it odd how quickly and aggressively he was reacting to it. I come into the living room to apologize. I even was saying something along the lines of, Sorry, man, I didn't know you were here. But as soon as I came into the room, the sound stopped and no one was there. I was so convinced I had heard someone that I even knocked on my roommate's doors but they were gone. I texted them and confirmed that they were gone and I was all alone. I never heard the footsteps again, or honestly footsteps that loud, and still don't have an explanation. Story 36. My parents own a business on the same property as their house, but separate from their house. Like one building is obviously the shop, and the other is clearly a private residence with a fence, gate, etc. I was 13, home alone, and coming out of the basement with laundry. Walk into the dining room to start folding, and there's a man standing there looking around. I yell at him about what the hell he thinks he's doing. What the hell does he want? Get out of my goddamn house, what have you? Mind you, my parents' dining room is far back in the house. You have to walk through the whole rest of the lower level of the house to get there, and this bad person didn't once stop and be like, oh, I shouldn't be here. Nope. Walk right in like he owned the place. He says he's a customer here to pick up an order. I yell at him, him that the shop closed hours ago, get the fudge out of my house, start screaming at him like a banshee on roids and basically shove him out by force of volume alone. He skedaddled to his car and left and I told my parents what happened when they came home. Mother seriously called the next day and tried to bad person at my dad about my nasty attitude and my awful language. My dad cut him off and said he was lucky I didn't just stab him. He's now banned from the premises and his order will be shipped to him after payment is received. For once, my dad took my side, and that cleared any doubt in my mind that I might have overreacted, Lowell. I was paranoid for months after that. It was insane. Story 37. TLDR. 
Grandpa's alcoholic brother tries to break in and I cry like a little bad person. I was about 14 at the time. Grandparents' HSD left me home alone to go meet my great-grandma at the hospital. I was chilling in the front room on my tablet. I had the TV onto a cowboy movie channel for background noise. I also had a big bowl of egg noodles. Life was good. Then the doorbell rang and someone knocked. At first I thought that it was my grandparents and that they needed me to open the garage. But then I remembered that they would have called or texted me if they were on their way home. For the past four hours, my phone stayed silent and no messages had came. I went to the front door and looked through the peephole. It was my grandpa's brother. We'll call him Marvin. Marvin had gotten divorced two years prior to this. He was an alcoholic and he had been drifting from house to house of family and friends. He had stayed with us a few months ago, but my grandpa kicked him out after discovering that Marvin was shitting on the floor, even though the toilet was right next to his room. After Marvin left, he had tried to break in, but Grandpa had stuck wood in the window so it couldn't open. Grandpa also knew that his brother was too scared to break a window, even if he was drunk. Marvin started calling for someone to answer the door. Me, being scared that he would somehow get in and potentially terminate me, started crying and turned the TV off. I grabbed my phone and dragged my crying peach to the back door where I softly called for my dogs, who were in the backyard. The dogs followed me and I went into the bathroom and shut and locked the door with my dogs. Marvin kept banging on the front door and I called my grandma in tears. Grandma told me that she would call our neighbor, Paul, and that her and grandpa would be home in a half hour. I stayed in the bathroom and kept crying as Marvin banged on the door. My dogs licked me to try and calm me down. Eventually, the banging stopped and grandma called me and said that Paul had chased Marvin away. Grandma and grandpa came home ten minutes later and I felt better. I'm 18 now and I haven't heard one word about Marvin. I'm not sure if he's dead or alive. Story 38 was playing Xbox on my home theater setup. 100-inch projector screen, surround sound, the whole shop bang. Mind you, I had the headset on with the game audio, so I turned the volume of the surround sound receiver completely off. Just me, big screen in the dark room. Was thunderstorming outside, me playing some Code D. Next thing you know, everything goes black, power goes out. That's when I went pale. Well, when the power went out and reset, so did the surround sound receiver. Who would have known at reset it would turn it back on full blast white noise? Pitch black room, surround sound, white noise on full blast. Full blast, crazy loud. I couldn't process what was happening. I thought I just got struck by lightning. Story 39. Me and my dog were chilling in the basement when all of a sudden I see what is very clearly a flashlight beam in the yard near the tiny basement window. I was especially spooked because only a few weeks before my sister and I had been up very late and after turning on the kitchen light, had seen a person sprinting across the yard to get away after realizing someone was awake. I thought I was going to pour out the water myself with fear. Went upstairs, turned on a light so they knew someone was awake, and let the dog out. She went crazy, barking and whining, and I slowly stuck my head out the door. It was the neighbor kids who had just moved in, looking for their cat that had gotten out. I was pissed, but mostly just relieved, and let them know that out here in rural areas, standing in someone's yard at night, could get you shot. Story 40. This happened just a few hours ago, and then I was laughing about it just from the absurdity of the situation, but now I'm a bit creeped out. I live in the outskirts of a small rural town with low crime. My neighbors are hoarders and their junk clutters their yard. It's storming pretty severely with rain, wind, crazy lightning, ECT. Enter morbidly obese man. Just walking in the street, peering at the junk hoard, looks in the neighbor's window, starts going through their wet, soggy junk. Notices my house and goes behind our tree trying to peek in the window of my room. Must have seen my light on because off he goes to the tune of thunder down the road peeping in other windows. What the actual fudge? Story 41. Myrmecophobia ants here. Shortly after my husband and I moved in together, the ant apocalypse of 2012 occurred. I'll preface this by saying that we were by no means in a decent house. It was run down but functional with a decent yard. Perfect size for two people but not in great shape. Anyway, I was home alone and noticed an ant on the counter in the kitchen. I went to find ant killer spray. I'm always prepared. And when I came back, there were a few. Not unexpected. I spray them. They pass away. I'm happy. And she lived happily ever. Nope. I then open a cabinet and find it swarming nightmarishly with ants. I opened another cabinet to the same. At this point, I leave the house, get into my car, and call my husband, telling him I'm not going back into the house until it's taken care of. I hate ants. Story 42. I've put this story on here before, but it fits this thread. 
On my last night in my university house, I was woken by something pulling on my foot in the middle of the night. I panicked and thought someone or something was in the house. I laid in bed paralyzed with fear, trying to listen for any footsteps or noise and nothing. Eventually, I put my phone torch on and saw a neighbor's cat playing outside my bedroom door. He'd always out the garden and never came in. He was also a super mean cat that you couldn't stroke. I'd left the kitchen window open and that was how he came in. It was honestly one of the scariest moments of my life and it was a flipping cat. 